Uh, Peter asks, does the mapping software work off of GPS? Uh, this particular uh, software, I don't have experience using a handheld GPS unit. Um, I know that you can gather data on a GPS and upload it into Google Earth. I haven't done that. I've done it in um, in some other programs that are, uh, you know, like Arc Arc GIS, but uh, but I don't have any direct experience with a GPS. You should be able to upload them as a KML file um, in Google Earth, um, kind of like a shape file in ArcMap. I'll click around here and see what um, what options we got here. So yeah, it looks like there are tons of different uh, types of of data that you can that you can import to to Google Earth. So. Esri shape files, I know those are uh, something that folks will use on a, on a GPS. Any other questions before we get started? So Tom's asking if I'm using SketchUp. I'm, I'm going to be using SketchUp and, uh, and Google Earth. So Tom's asking uh, how much SketchUp costs. So there are two versions of SketchUp. One of them is free and one of them is, uh, is the pro version. Up until this last year, the free version of SketchUp was, was the version I'm showing you here, this Make 2017. This is a desktop app that you download, and you still can download this uh, from SketchUp. It's just not being supported. Their new free version is actually a, a browser-based uh, application, which I find it's a little bit uh, simpler. It lags because it's dependent upon your internet speed, and so I have... You know, I, I didn't actually realize that they had gone to this other web-based application when I said I would do this nutshell, and so I'm, I, I had to do a bit of a scramble to catch up and figure out um, possible to do in that online version. Um, I, I found that it was too difficult for me, so you guys are stuck with the old version here. It's still free. Uh, they won't be having any updates for it, though, but hopefully it'll, it'll stay workable for a long time. The pro version, um, if you want it, is it's fairly expensive, several hundred dollars. So Tom said he couldn't find the downloadable free version. Um, if you still Let have a link for it. that. I did check this this afternoon. Oh. It was still available as of this afternoon. So. Okay. Well, Matt's looking, um, looking for the link for the free version. I'm going to go ahead and, and start. Uh, by introducing Savannah Institute. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time or maybe don't really know a whole lot about Savannah Institute, we're a nonprofit organization. Um, we're really focused on research and education about agroforestry. So agroforestry meaning trees that produce crops um, that help farms in other ways. A lot of our work is doing research in co cooperation with farmers um, and so really providing connections between farmers and scientists and universities and other organizations, um, trying to make sure that we can all learn from everybody else's work, um, learn from other people's mistakes, uh, and really try to advance agroforestry in the Midwest. We also host a bunch of different events usually during the year, farm field days uh, and the perennial farm gathering, which is our annual um, gathering where we bring everybody together, and um, everybody, it's like a great networking event, and people get to see little snippets um, and, and hear updates of, of what people have been up to, um, and that just happened in November. We also develop educational resources, uh, like, like the one you're participating in tonight. And another thing I'd like to say is that we'd really like to thank our sponsors, so the Hegner Family Foundation and also North Central there. Um, without their support, we wouldn't be able to bring you these discussions for free. So we're very happy and grateful for their support, and we're also super thankful um, that everybody is joining us tonight, too. And right. so Matt's going to be um, presenting tonight. Uh, he, um, he recently graduated with a master's degree from um, in agroforestry, I think, from the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana. And he's been working with us uh, for the last several months. He presented at the last perennial farm gathering uh, his master's research. And um, we'll have that resource 
up hopefully soon. Um, it's a planning guide for agroforestry. Um, it's really helpful and comprehensive, and it's really great. And we're um, we've been really happy to work with Matt and get to know him a little bit better. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have got a couple of, of, of short videos that I put together over the past couple of days because invariably technology fails right when you're giving a presentation. And so I pre-recorded some things and we're going to just watch the video. Hopefully they work. And, um, and then I do have SketchUp and Google Earth up here so we can ask questions and play around a little bit. Both of these programs are free. SketchUp uh, now is um, their, their newest free version is a web-based application. I, I am not as familiar with that, and that's not what I'll be using. I'm using SketchUp Make 2017, last year's free version. You can still download it here on this page, and I gave the links. And the other program, program I'm going to be using is Google Earth Pro. Uh, so Google Earth now is also a web-based program, but if you, if you go to the Google Earth Pro, which is free now, um, you can still get it, still get it for free. Great. Um, I'm just going to go ahead, unless there are any questions, and start this first sort of introduction. What we're going to do is import some stuff into Google Earth and then export it later to SketchUp. So let's go. Hi, folks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import a soil map into Google Earth Pro that we can later export to SketchUp for use in farm scale planning. I'm using Google Earth Pro here. It's actually a free version. Uh, you, can, you can download it from Google. And, uh, but I'm going to start in Soil Web. This is a, a really neat website that, um, that, that has the soil data that you can just click on anywhere on this map, and it's going to show you what soil type you've got. You can come up to the, uh, the menu here and, and enter your address. But you can see when I click here, it's going to pull up the, the, the soil data that includes you know, the farmland class, uh, drainage class, flooding frequency, a lot of really important information for when you're putting trees in. Um, so I'm actually just going to do a screen capture of this. I use this snipping tool and uh, you can do whatever you know your operating system uh, does for screen capture but this gives me a nice clean image. I'm going to save this as uh, soil web capture and uh, then I'm going to go back into Google Earth here, and I'm going to click this button up here that says Add Image Overlay. I'm going to find the image I just saved, and, um, and then I'm going to rename it Soil Web Capture. I'm going to go down here to this transparency, and I'm going to make it about 50-50, and that'll allow us to match this up. Now, you're going to have to match this photo, and you can see the barn here is a different size on this. Um, the, the middle crosshairs here move the picture around, and then these outside crosshairs are actually going to scale it. But it's really important that you hold the shift button as you click here. That's going to keep it scaling proportionally. Uh, if you don't do that, things get smushed pretty quick, and it's, uh, that's not what we want. So you just kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit here. Until, um, until it doesn't look blurry anymore. And you, you don't have to be perfect on this. Soil maps aren't perfect anyway, but um, you can get pretty close. You, you, know, you can zoom in and kind of check uh, to see. I'm looking at the barn here. And then you know, maybe at the road uh, up here to kind of match it up. Just fiddle with it a little until it looks pretty good. That, that looks fine. Um, not too blurry anymore. Then I'm going to take this back down to about 25%. Uh, and that, what that's going to do is take away the blurriness, but it's going to leave sort of the outline of these uh, soil types so that when uh, we use it later on, these will get exported along with the photos. Great. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Tom's asking, can you access site index info, in, info from this website? Tom, you asked me the same question at the... Um, <laughs> at the perennial farmer gathering and I couldn't find it then. Let me see if I can find it now. Um, if I click on these soil, so this is actually the, the live web application here. If you click on the soil type itself, um, let me see if it, if it gets under these land capability classes. I feel like we went through this. Okay, so I've got white ash and black walnut, eastern red cedar, 
I don't think that's probably what you're asking, are you? You're looking for um, something with a maybe a number and a letter, aren't you? Um, let's see, soil suitability ratings. So we have essentially this data set, if you're familiar with web, um, web soil survey, it's the same data set. This is just a little easier to access. Um, I'd have to play around with it, Tom. I'm not uh, I'm really sure. Or Kathy, uh, whoever's there. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Probably not. Let's see. Erosion factors. We've got our hydro hydrologic group. Uh, yeah, good question. Welcome back. In the last video, I showed you how to import a soil map overlay into Google Earth Pro. Now we're going to import these images into SketchUp to create accurately scaled maps for farm and landscape planning. Now, you used to be able to do this in the free versions of SketchUp by coming up to File, clicking Geolocation, and saying Add Location. And this would pull up the aerial imagery from Google. Their agreement with Trimble has since expired, and so that is only uh, available in the Pro version. You can see we just have roadmaps here, which is less useful for, for our purposes. I've come up with a bit of a workaround, and it's not perfect. There are probably better ways to do it, but here's what I do. Let's go back to Google Earth, and before we actually export this imagery, I'd like to create an anchor. I'm going to come up to this thumbtack-looking button. It's a new place mark, and um, if I have two fields that I, I want to use, I'm going to try to put this in a, in a place in between that's sort of out of the way. And this is going to allow me to stitch these photos together. Uh, for my purposes, I actually want to mark this. This is a waterer here, so I'm, I'm going to mark that. You can use something else if you, if you want to mark another thing. Click OK. I'm going to rename this as waterer. Hit Enter. OK, great. Now I want to center uh, you know, on the field so I've got what I want in the frame. Make sure you've got your anchor point. Then I'm going to come up here to the Save Image button. I'm going to make sure that the resolution is at set at maximum, and then go to Map Options and unclick everything except the scale bar. Now, this everything shrunk down when I increased the resolution, so I'm going to increase that back up, and uh, I want this to hit 200 here. And hit, hit Save, and then this is just the, the Google Earth settings. We don't really need that file. What we want to do is hit Save Image. I'm going to call this uh, Nutshell 1. And, um, and then I'm just going to drag to my second image that I want here, making sure that my icon is still in the frame. Hit Save Image. I'll call this Nutshell 2. And then I'm going to go back to SketchUp. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. And I'm going to call this layer uh, Base Map. And then I want to make sure that I'm editing a click here so that when I import these, they'll be imported to this base map. Come up here to the File button, click Import, find your first photo. And then you're going to have to click once to anchor a corner. You want to make sure this is um, not flipped over like this. You just drag it up and click again. We'll rescale it in a minute. Now, um, you're going to want to double click on this, um, or right click on this, sorry, and say Explode. Right click again and say make group. And then this is going to allow us to um, just, just edit this particular photo. If you, don't, if you don't do this, later on when you scale multiple photos, things get really messy. I'm going to click this tape measure tool and then come into this corner on the scale bar. And I'm not sure if it's better to use the edge or the middle or whatever, but I'm going to click somewhere around here. You can see I've got 200 feet for my scale bar. I'm going to drag it across, click again, and then just type 200 and the apostrophe kind of to 200 feet. Hit enter. It's going to ask if I want to resize. I say yes. And now we should have a scale image. Uh, I can double check here to make sure it's just kind of close. Sure enough, it's just about 200 feet. Great. Now I'm going to import my second one. Nutshells 2. And just do a similar thing. I don't want to stick it right on top here. Um, well, I, I actually want to explode this again. Sorry. 
Um, I should have unclicked because that made that part of this group. Um, so I'm going to explode this. I'm going to make it its own group and then edit that. I'm going to double click so that it's, I, I'm sure that I'm not editing this other one. And again, if you, if you try to do that and the other one is selected, it's going to rescale the one we just did and make it incorrect. So we're just going to do the same thing. Drag it here. We've got the same scale of 200 feet. Type in 200 feet. Hit, hit yes. And now we've got our two images <clears throat> that should be scaled correctly. Now to stitch these together, I'm, I'm just going to zoom in on our icon here. I'm going to click the Move tool and then pick a point that's pretty recognizable. And I like to drop these at the um, at the origin because it kind of snaps to it. So I'm going to do that. Click this one and just do the same thing. Oh, it's not. Um, I think I exploded it, so let's make it a group again. Zoom into my anchor point, try to pick the same spot, drop this at the origin. Great. Now we have our two photos that are pretty well matched up. Um, we've got these lines here though, so um, what I can do is actually explode these again so that I can edit them. And, um, and then I'm going to click on this line. You can see there's this Google Earth in the lower left-hand corner of this photograph. I don't really want that in the middle of my field. I would rather have the top of this one. So I'm going to erase this line. I can erase this guy too. But what happens if I click this one, this line, is that um, it's being fiddly. If I erase that, then things get all wonky. So I'm not going to do that. I'm actually just going to click click it and. Um, if I can if I can get the line here, right click and say hide. And that's a workaround so that we don't have to see that line. And now we've got these two photographs that are pretty darn well stitched together. I'm gonna select them all and make them a group again. And, uh, and that's our aerial imagery. Great, so now that we've got our two images st stitched together, I just wanted to show you real quick, I've imported a larger photo. Um, you may be thinking, well, why didn't he just take a picture of the whole farm instead of stitching this together? And I'm going to show you here um, the difference in, in detail. So as I toggle between these, look at the barn. You can see that the detail is, is pretty significantly different. Um, at the scale you're working at, a larger photograph may be fine, but that's why I choose to take the time to stitch these two together. Great. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Lots of talking. Lots of questions. My screen still shows a gap. Oh, Google Earth Pro. Yeah, um, so this whole, let's see, 19. Um, I'm not sure what Heidi was asking there, but um, I, I've been going kind of back and forth between Google Earth. Um, it looks like Tom figured out in um, Web Soil Survey where the, where the information he was looking for was. Um, I definitely don't want to blow through this without just like, you know, with it flying over people's heads. Um, this would have flown over my head if I had not been familiar with SketchUp and Google Earth. And I, I want to kind of stress that, um, you know, this isn't kind of an intro to SketchUp. I, I, this is basically, if you're, if you're a little bit familiar with SketchUp, I'm, I'm showing what you can do with it. There are great tutorials on using SketchUp, lots of videos to get you started, and it's a pretty intuitive program. It's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, so, you know, to get basics isn't too, too big of a deal. So I understand that that was really quick. Uh, Michael's asking, okay. will you be showing us? Uh, yeah, we're definitely going to work. Yeah, absolutely. everything from here on out is SketchUp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the, the lag, guys. Kathy says they're going to use the YouTube videos a lot. <laughs> I think a lot of people will. Yeah. I just need to see things on repeat a lot. So I think I would be in that same group right. with using the YouTube videos a lot. Welcome back. In the last video, we imported some Google Earth images that included a soil map overlay into SketchUp for use in landscape and farm planning. In this video, we're going to design an agroforestry planting with chestnuts, pawpaws, and a layer of berries. I thought it would be fun to use Tom Wall's design uh, from a couple of weeks ago, the Nutshell series, uh, as our, as our uh, example here. 
Now, before I do anything, I'm going to select all, and I want to reorient this base map to these axes. I'm going to come over here to this rotate tool. I want my tree rows to be parallel to this tree line. So I'm just going to click here, click again, and then rotate this whole thing so it snaps to that green axis. That's going to allow us to lay things out a lot easier later on. Great, now that we got that, I'm going to add a layer called Field Border and make sure that I'm clicked on that to work in here. And then I'm going to come up to this Pencil tool and I, I want this to be a true outline. So I'm going to go right in the middle of the tree line. I'm going to come down here, going to come across. And of course, this is up to you where you define your field along the fence line. I'm going to close this in. Great. Uh, one neat thing is if you click on this and you can see sort of the area, if you come up here, it'll tell you what the square footage is. So 63,000 square feet is roughly an acre and a half, and you can do the math there. A useful little tool. I'm going to make this a group and, uh, and then make sure that I'm clicked on the group. Now I'm going to do an offset. So I'm going to come over to this offset tool and from the edge, uh, let me undo that. I'm going to click on the edge and I can bring this in, you see, or take it out. This is useful if you're doing an equipment turnaround or if you want to you know, build a fence and you want to keep the fence a certain distance away from the edge of the field. I'm going to do a 25 foot offset. So click and then type 25 feet. And I can see that that's about the edge of my tree line here. That's great. Okay, now I'm going to do some, uh, some guidelines here. And I'm, I'm going to use this tape measure tool. It's really useful because then later on you can uh, take these off. I want to set this at 10 feet. So I'm going to go in and type 10 feet. Our rows are going to be 20 feet across, but that's uh, this is half of that first row. We also are going to have a shrub layer in between here at 10 feet, if I understood Tom correctly. So I'm just going to pull a couple of these off at 10 feet. We don't have to do the whole thing, but That'll give us kind of an idea. You can see these guidelines will extend past your, your model. Great, now we're ready to start adding trees. So I'm going to add a chestnut layer and make sure that I'm working in that layer. And I'm going to come up to this round circle tool. And on my first guide here, just go ahead and click and click anywhere. Now I want my chestnuts to be, I want this model to be about a, 15 foot diameter, so I'm going to choose a 7.5 foot radius. They get bigger than this, but for looking at this map, that'll be pretty good. I can color this now if I'd like. Let's pick a nice chestnut color here. What do we think? Uh, something like that. And then I'm going to make this a component. So make sure it's highlighted. Make component. We can call this chestnut. Chestnut. Hit enter. And uh, I'm going, to move, I'm going to move this up just a little bit here so it matches with the top. Great. Now here comes a really fun part and one of the reasons why SketchUp is so awesome. I like to move from the middle here so uh, it won't let me just get it unless I infer from the outside by hovering a little bit. If I click here, you can see I can just move it, but if I hit control, it'll make a copy. And um, as long as I'm snapped along this line, I can click anywhere and then I want these 20 feet apart, so I'm going to type 20 feet. And then the really cool thing is I can, I can hit X, so like times, and then say whatever number. So I'm going to put times 8. And it'll make 8 copies along the line that I, I did here. So you can see you can, you can very quickly make a, a lot of copies of something. So I'm actually going to select that whole row now and do the same thing to copy my rows. I'm going to make sure that I have got the middle. Hit control. Now this is our halfway mark, the 10 foot, so I'm going to go to the next the next 10 foot, which would be 20. Uh, I'm going to click and then hit times 12. Okay, well that wasn't quite enough, so I'm just going to type times 13. And that's closer, isn't it? Great, so now I filled out my whole field in just a, just a few seconds. And uh, so you can see it can be very quick. 
Great, let's do a pawpaw layer now. I'm going to add pawpaw. Enter. Make sure I'm on that pawpaw layer. And um, I'm just going to, I'm going to start in the middle of one of these chestnuts and that'll give me the right, the right uh, reference point. For my chestnuts, I'm going to do a 2.5 foot radius. I would like to color them green. Let's do green. Nice dark green. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I make this a component. We'll call it pawpaw. Hit enter. I'm going to move this down in between. And uh, it is the center and the component. It's 10 feet. And then I can do the same thing I did with the chestnuts now. Uh, keep it on the move tool. And from the center, hit control so it makes a copy. I can move it down, type in 20 feet, and then say times, what did I say, 7? And that puts one in between each, each row. Now here's where layers come in handy. To copy this row across, I can come up here to my, my layers and I can turn off the chestnut layer. And that'll make it easier to select this pawpaw layer. I'm going to copy it across just like I did with the chestnuts. And again, we're going to the second line. Make sure you hit control. And, uh, and then I'm going to hit times 13. Let's turn the chestnut layer back on. And so now we have our pawpaws and our chestnuts already laid out. Great, let's do berries. Add a layer, honey berry, enter. Make sure I'm on that layer. I'm gonna come up to the circle tool again. I'd like my honey berries to be 1.5 feet for a radius. I'm gonna color it purple. Let's make it a component. Uh, let's right click, make component. We'll call it honey berry. I'm going to adjust so that it is up on this line and then make my copies. Drag it down, make sure it's snapped to the line, hit control. I want these three feet apart, type three feet, and then let's say times 50. That wasn't quite enough, let's do 60. Yeah, 55, perfect, okay. I'm going to do the same thing with the berries. I'm going to turn off the chestnut and the pawpaw layer here so that I can just select this berry layer. And then I'm going to move it across. Get that center, just like working from the center. Hit control. Make sure that you're on that red axis. And then uh, I can zoom out and look. What did I say? 13. Perfect. Let's turn our chestnut on. And our pawpaw on. And now we've got our whole layout in just a few seconds, a um, few minutes. I can come back in and erase these later, the, the ones that sort of overshot, but it's easier to erase than it is to add things in. Okay, so you'll notice real quick that uh, it does this funny layer color thing. This is because SketchUp is telling us that these are on the same plane. I'm going to address how to print this all out later, but if you want to look at just your um, just your plants, you can unclick those other layers. Great, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Anybody have, let's see what we got. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Too bad I actually planted trees, it's not that quick, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, once you, once you learn how to use SketchUp and kind of figure your, your way around, um, <laughs> It's it's really fun to to mess around, and um, the next video is actually the most fun because then you can get into kind of visualizing stuff, and it's a little bit it feels a little bit more like planting trees than just plopping circles on a map. Okay, <laughs> but, you, but you can get it to fruit faster too. Yes, I can make fruit happen <laughs> quick. Michael said the full-blown download version, we were only able to download a 30-day free trial. 
Yeah, so that's, um, that would be really unfortunate. I, I haven't actually downloaded this after they came out with a new version. Um, you have to make sure that you're clicking the make and not the um, pro version. But what it probably did, if I remember correctly, is it automatically just stuck you in pro because you get it for 30 days. And um, and then it just reverts back to the free version. Like you don't have to enter any credit card information or anything. Um, it doesn't go away. You just can't use the pro features after that. So that may be what happened, Michael. I'm not sure how they're doing it at, at, at this point. Welcome back. In the last video, we did a simple 2D agroforestry layout with chestnuts, pawpaws, and honeyberry. These are useful for printing out, for taking to the field, and also for generating nursery lists. I wanted to show you how we can use the component function to actually count up the number of trees. So if I click on this chestnut, it can go up here to the entity info and see that it's got 92 in the model. I've got 92 chestnuts here. If I, if I click on the pawpaw, I've got 100 and the honeyberry here, 621. This is really useful for when you're kind of tweaking things and you're moving stuff around. It'll automatically update that component count. So I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. Um, I also wanted to show you how I lay things out for printing. So you probably noticed as you tilt, uh, the, the color here looks kind of weird. And if I do an overhead, it doesn't show up at all. This is SketchUp's way of telling us that these are on the same plane. And if I want to do a print, a 2D printed map, it doesn't work out so well. So what I'm actually going to do is, is take off the base map layer. And I'm going to select all of the things that I want to show up in the map. And then I'm going to go move it here. I can click on really any corner. And I'm going to hit the up key on my keyboard. And what that's going to do is constrain the movement in a just completely vertical on the blue axis. I'm going to click and then type one inch. And what that's effectively going to do is just stick it slightly above that base map so that now no matter how I, how I tilt things, it's, uh, it's, gonna look, it's gonna look right. Okay, so I like this overhead, you know, this top view that gets us directly vertical. One thing uh, that I would like to do now is to is to rotate this back so that it's at true north. So I'm going to select everything I see, go back to my rotate tool, and then find an edge here, and then just rotate this back to the red axis. And now this should be pointing true north, just like the, the photos that we imported are. You can see the waterer looks right and the scale bar and stuff. So great, now we can zoom in and sort of center on where we want the map come up to File and click Export 2D Graphic. And um, that should export now just as a, um, as a JPEG. Let's see, where did I stick it? Here it is. Okay, and here it is. So we can print this out. We can come in and edit with other programs to uh, add notes or legend or, or whatever. It's a little difficult to do that kind of thing in SketchUp. So I recommend uh, exporting it as a JPEG and, and doing, you know, scale bars as far as distance apart from trees and things in, in another program. You can do it in SketchUp here, but it doesn't print very well on when you've got such a, um, a large scale as this. Okay, I'm going to go through now some of the really neat 3D tools. And one of the best ways to, to do this is to go up to the 3D warehouse, and, which is a collection of all kinds of models that people have uploaded that they've made. So everything, people have done everything here. You can find buckets, you can find buildings, you can find cars, whatever uh, people have thought up. I've got a couple tree models in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how to download. And it'll come right into your SketchUp model. Um, it may take a, a few minutes to download if it's a big, if it's a big file. If you're looking for trees, I recommend trying to find the 2D face me option, which is essentially just a photograph that rotates so that you're always looking at it. Um, and <laughs> here it is, but I've got the uh, I've got one of these layers off. So there, let me turn that back on. And um, 
So this is the tree that I, I came up with through an external uh, plugin that I, I used a while back. And you can see what I mean by that 2D face me. It's actually, um, as I rotate here, it just kind of faces the camera, but it's, it uses a lot less memory than a uh, than an actual 3D tree would be. And you can move these around just like you would um, you know your circles you can plop them down on top if you want to do a 3d view and uh, and you can make it real pretty I've already done some of that here and I'm gonna show you if I can uh, do it without the computer lagging I'm gonna start uh, clicking some of these layers that I did before and um, 3d honeyberry 3d I'm going to take off this chestnut layer and let's take off our honeyberry layer. And so now if I zoom in, you can see I kind of did a 3D version. These are all the, the sort of, um, you know, 2D face me versions of 3D. I've got my berry layer here. I have a pawpaw layer. Pawpaw trees don't actually look like this, but um, anyway. The right size and then my chestnut trees here i can even come in here and and i have imported a couple of uh of uh, other fun things you can throw in you know a couple of chicken tractors here i it looks like i maybe didn't put the there we are um that was just a download from another user i can i can change the way i view stuff so if i come over here and say position camera and I drop this here then this is kind of just uh, as if I were standing there looking around you know fun stuff it's nice to, to sort of um, visualize what might be uh, possible you can download tractors and stick them in here to see how they might fit um, pretty cool especially if you want to get people excited about your project That'll wrap up this series on 3D design tools for agroforestry. It was brought to you by the Savannah Institute as part of their Nutshell series. So keep an eye on the website, savannahinstitute.org, if this is something that you enjoyed, and sign up for our newsletter so you can stay in touch. We'll see you next time. I'll just talk for a little bit. Um, yay, Tom says cool 3D trees now. So one of the things that you can do with SketchUp is, is both upload and download your your designs to the web and anybody anybody can get at them. There's an icon up here called the 3D Warehouse. And um, if you click that, it'll bring up um, you know, all the designs that everybody uh, has uploaded to SketchUp. And so if you want to pull trees or tractors or buildings or whatever uh, into your model, you can do that pretty freely. I'm actually going to close that because it's going to try to think harder and we don't really want that right now. Um, but just know that that's an option. These trees, I actually have uploaded some of them into SketchUp, and you can find them. Um, I would love to build uh, an agroforestry SketchUp toolkit that has all the correct spacing and correct 3D representations for trees, and you can just go download it and kind of pick and choose. And um, It's been on my to-do list forever, but I never have gotten around to it. So, um, But you can, if you're, if you, I will say if you're, if you're uploading trees specifically, try to pick trees that have the, f these trees actually aren't 3D, they're 2D, and I'm gonna pivot up here so you can kind of see that. They're 2D images that actually rotate to face the viewer. So even though it looks like they're 3D, when I'm spinning this, they're actually just spinning so that they're always facing me. These actually use a lot less memory in your computer than an actual 3D tree would. If all of these were rendered, it, I, my computer would bog down and I wouldn't be able to do it. So um, that's, a, that's a quick tip. And there are actually plugins that you can download that will allow you to, to design your own trees. And you can make them whatever size and shape and trunks and all that. So um, they're placed in just the same way. As, as our circle, circles were. You can copy them and, and move them around and stuff. Let me go here and, and I'm actually going to just take off uh, these circle layers so that you can see uh, 
is that pawpaw layer what it would look like and uh, to give you an idea of what you can kind of pull in these are some chicken tractors that somebody had uploaded so you know if you want to see if these Salatin style chicken tractor fits between your trees you can do that make sure that the model is the right size right you can you know like I said pull in anything people have made models of almost everything so um, it's just a really not neat way to visualize and there are all these tools to make it kind of fun you can change your viewpoint here like drop a person down and then this is as if you're standing in your model um, looking around you know admittedly this is probably less useful for planning but it, it's kind of got the wow factor and it, it gets people excited and you can feel like you're growing trees really fast um, you know if you do 3d representations and you're really thinking hard about you know sunlight and shade and uh, you can make it a useful a useful tool yep we're still at trees it's I'm afraid uh, that's that's probably as far as we're going to get tonight. Um, but those are the basics, and uh, I, I think the really useful parts of SketchUp are uh, the the sort of iterative. You know, you can change things quick, and you don't have to recount. Um, you can uh, do weird shaped fields and do the layout pretty quickly. And then you can print out a field map. So, any other questions? Uh, Michael asks, are um, there any recommended major requirements? Um, probably. <laughs> you know, I've been using SketchUp for a long time on lots of different computers, and it, it seems to run pretty well unless you're doing some really uh, detailed maps um, or if you're trying to stream, apparently. So Kathy, here's the uh, I, I made a link to that, and what you're actually going to want is SketchUp Make uh, 2017. Any other questions? I again, I apologize for the technical difficulties tonight. Um, we're going to have the like we mentioned earlier. Yeah, we can. You can look it up on YouTube and pause it as, as many times. Slow it down. I I I was trying to cram in kind of a lot into a little bit of a into a little space so uh, thanks for thanks for being patient with us tonight yeah thanks for your interest and thanks for being patient um, and I think um, you'll get a lot out of the YouTube videos Kathy says have you used a free app called photo filter that does some of the same as SketchUp um, I, I haven't used that one no no that's another good resource. Thanks, Kathy. But she says she wants to learn more on SketchUp. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, other mapping programs. So the problem with things that are, are usually based on a photograph is that they are they're not scaled properly, right? I can open a photograph in an editing, you know, in paint, and I can draw all my trees in, but they're not necessarily going to be the right size. And so the nice thing about SketchUp is when you say, I want this to be 30 feet across, it actually is 30 feet across. Um, other, other programs that do two-scale uh, mapping, you can do it in AutoCAD, but that's obviously a, a professional tool. I've never used AutoCAD much, so, um, uh, but it's definitely possible in AutoCAD. I know that, that uh, some landscape architectures uh, prefer that. Um, you, you can kind of do some of this in Google Earth, but um, individual trees are difficult. You can, you can do fields, and, and they're to scale, and they'll actually make a polygon. You could probably drop points on the field, but, um, but after a while, it, it, it's just going to pay off to, to learn something uh, that can use scale. Michael's asking if it automatically scales the trees based on the numeric input. Yes, it can, Michael. So um, you can resize um, your trees and then just type in a number for how big you want them to be, if, if that's what you're asking. 
the other the other thing um, in regards to the photo and kind of doing it old school, um, if you don't have the the SketchUp or you don't you're not doing you're not using any fancy software. If you do have an aerial photo, um, you can do what remote sensors used to do back in the day. Is they would have uh, aerial photos, and then they have certain things that they know exactly um, what the what the scale is of the photo. So say you know that the the field mm -hmm. is you know 300 yards long or something, or um, you know that this fence is so long. You can take things that you that you know or that you can measure on the photo, and then you can kind of back calculate. And it's, I mean, it's definitely going to be a lot more work, like kind of going in and figuring it all out. But that's something that you could do in paint um, once you once you have mm -hmm. kind of the scale figured out on your on your own. Um, Kind of the old, that's, old that's school. great, Kathy. Our, um, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm used to being called Kathy. My little sister is Kathy, so. <laughs> Why did I just, yeah, yeah, Kathy. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, Kathy. Um, no, no problem. I'm just having a, yeah. Um, that's a really good point. So you can actually just export the or print the photo from Google Earth that has a scale bar on it, and use that scale bar to um, to make your trees, you know, and and y you can actually get a ruler out and measure the scale bar and say, okay, this 200 foot scale bar is, you know, three inches or whatever, and divide three inches by 200, and then figure out kind of your per. It, it probably would work a little better with uh, centimeters because you're not dealing with our crazy non-metric system, but. Um, and you can actually make little like paper cutouts for a 30 foot radius tree and trace around them. You know, I've done lots of that stuff on paper over the years, so it's not uh, insurmountable. It's definitely possible to do. Um, somebody, Michael's asking about layering in photos from a drone. Yeah, you certainly could. Um, when you pull in that imagery from Google Earth, it can be from whatever source you want, and. Um, some of the really exciting stuff with drones are um, actually the elevations. So they they can they can use lidar, which is a basically a, a mapping a, a way to map elevations, and you can pull that stuff in to SketchUp, and and then if you've got topography, you can actually make topographical maps, really highly detailed topo maps, uh, for use in planning. I didn't get into anything except flat today because that's a whole different ball of wax. But um, but yeah, for sure, drones are are more and more being used. So thanks, thanks, Matt. Um, I I think um, the the YouTube videos are going to be really helpful. Um, and again, I will send out all of the material um, in an email um, just as soon as I can. And thanks again for joining us. I really appreciate it. And and Matt, thank you so much for all the work that you put into this. And thanks for, for sticking it through uh, tonight, even even through the technical difficulties. Yeah, no problem. I wish it, <laughs> wish it turned out better for everybody. But uh, they will be on YouTube. And, and take as much time as you want. And, um, leave comments and pick it apart, please, because I'm, I'm definitely not a professional at, uh, you know, landscape design, but um, so I, I value everybody's input, too. Thanks so much, and, and everybody have a great night.